Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in time and space. Chuck Jines documenting the human experience. Just a guy in search of the true, the good, and the beautiful. Welcome to another photo talk. This is going to be the beginning of a long series, I guess. Um, I'm undertaking a new narrative publication project from um, um, a documentary work that I'd done years ago. And um, so we're going to look at a couple of photos here today. And as always, we're going to talk about the equipment, some of the technical and compositional elements of the photos, as well then um, um, some of the social and political uh, meanings behind the images. But also we're going to be adding here today, you know, the process of selecting through a large body of uh, photographs to go through the process to where you have a publication, a magazine or a book or something like that. Uh, in this case, I'm I'm looking at uh, hey good good morning man or good afternoon to you or evening whatever it is. <laughs> in this case, I'm having to go through up more than twenty thousand. Hey Brad, good to see you, man. Uh, twenty thousand photographs that I took over the period of five years. The name of the project is uh, the Alley Boys. Um, I embedded myself and became friends and hung out with. Um, a group of homeless men in Chicago South Loop uh, for five years. And like I said, I got over 20,000 photographs that I am now in the process of um, boiling down to, uh, you know, th those that I can use in order to tell, th tell the story. And um, yesterday I did a video called Avalanche. <laughs> um, last night was the first time I actually opened up these files in a long, long time. And one of the first things I'm doing is, uh, I have all kinds of hard drives. Oh, well, I got stacks of hard drives and I'm going through these and getting everything onto one hard drive. And I've been kind of just kind of skimming through and looking at some of the photographs. And um, if I come across some that I think for sure are interesting, I've been printing them out and we'll take a look at some of those photos today. And also I want to talk about the process Um the editing process of doing this. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you these just real quick here. <clears throat> these are a little series of photographs. This is not the complete series, um, but there's a few here. This is not past the bottle. That We're going to take a look at that. That's the main photograph. But I think how this is going to, the magazine, the story, the narrative is going to start out with... Uh, Get your motherfucking hands out of my goddamn pocket. <laughs> Teddy Smith is one of the one of the homeless people. And um, we became really good friends. I, I love Teddy with all my heart. I hope he is um, doing doing well. But this is this is him, right? He's gonna get into a fight here. Um Again, all of these photographs were taken with uh, the 24 millimeter lens that I use and the 135. Um, almost, I would say upwards of 90% of these photos that you're looking at were shot on Tri-X film, uh, developed with a Rodinol stand development. And uh, this is right before they get into the fight. This is where uh, Teddy, starts, Teddy starts to make his move. Then uh, he's got him on the ground. Some ground and pound MMA at Talkers Park. And Teddy's about to club him with the stick. There's more to that sequence. So, you know, one of the things I'm noticing is that there's, you know, individual photographs and then there's, you know, sequences that, 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 I, that I can use of three to five photographs. 20,000 photos, holy smokes. <laughs> Yeah, I was hanging around for years. No wonder I got sick of scanning photographs. You know what I mean? Love the hair. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, but the photo, the main one I wanted to talk about today, and I said, we're going to look at a few more photos to this here real quick. And we'll be looking at a lot of photos through through the, the course of this. Um, it's called Pass the Bottle. And uh, there's no faces in this photograph. Um. And there's just, there's just, a, there's a lot here. One of the interesting things, and people aren't used to this today, um, Stutter's hand is blurry because it was moving, right? And you have to keep in mind that this was shot with film. So I can't just like crank my ISO 
uh, up to 6,400. And it, it's not like that. This was film. So a lot of times um, I'm shooting at, at uh, uh, shutter speeds of 30 and 60. And uh, um, it, it can be quite challenging to, uh, but uh, that, that's Teddy's hand passing the bottle there. And it's a pretty interesting photo. Again, we have the foreground interest here. Um, almost double foreground interest with uh, Hercules legs sticking out here, right? And then uh, it's just an interesting photograph. Um, this is another one kind of from the same scene. This is this is Stutters, uh, Teddy, and Hercules um, in their favorite alley that they used to hang around with. That's a pretty cool photo. I like the look on, on Stutters' face there. Um, standing behind Teddy um, partially is Tony, crazy Tony. Um, but this is also an interesting, an interesting photo that's going to go in a series. Again, this is a series of photographs that'll be part of a, of a larger, a larger story. Um, just real quick to, uh, I got to get me a shave. So I look good for the ladies, <laughs> Teddy shave and dry shaving in talkers park. Like I said, me and Teddy hung around a great deal. So I have a lot of different photos Teddy is a very charismatic person. Um, just a, a, a funny as hell. Uh, he could have been a stand-up comic, I tell you what. And he knew every dumpster in every alley and, and a man of fashion and style. You're going to notice that he's, I mean, almost, almost every day the guy's got a new wardrobe of some kind of crazy something or another. Um, we'll, I'll show you some different... Uh, we're going to talk about this one here a little bit too. And then here he is here. <laughs> uh, this was the day I was calling, calling him the Adam street cowboy. As you see, it says Adams. This is on, on Adam street corner of state and Adams. And he's, he found some cowboy hat. And um, again, again, upwards of 90% of these photographs are taken on Tri-X film and with a stand development. Now, this is, uh, I want to talk about this uh, photograph here just a little bit um, as far as the challenges of shooting with film in a low-light situation. This is um, uh, that theater off of Michigan Avenue down from the Congress Hotel. Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank on it. Anyway, this is behind there. It's a really, really dark alley. And what Teddy's actually doing here is he's, he's kind of singing, do up, my baby, and he's going like this with his head, right? Um, and it's really dark. I, I think I was at one fifteenth of a second, if I remember correctly. And what I was waiting for is for him to be in that stop position. You talk about the decisive moment because there, there's no, there's, there's no, you know, five frames a second or anything. This is shot with a Nikon, um, F as a matter of fact, I use different camera bodies. I used, um, a Nikon 3 for a while, a Nikon 4, um, an FM, but again, they're all the, the there's only two lenses that were ever used, and that's that's the uh, they're right here. As a matter of fact, the same, you know, gear is real limited <laughs> on this channel. There's not a lot of gear talk. Uh, the Nikon Nikkor 24 millimeter AIS um, is mo almost all of the work, and then the other one is the uh, Nikon Nikkor 135. You know, pretty much. Other than the MMA photography, where I d used a little bit of that 50 millimeter lens, that's the lens we're using. Um, but it's amazing. Uh, well, one of the thing about the stand development, if you could see this actually uh, in real life, he's like he's almost popping out of the photograph, and that's one of the things about a stand development. It really breaks up those lines um, of division. But that that's a real nice photograph there of Teddy, um, and that's the challenges of shooting film. And now the challenge is, and, and I, I hope this will be an interesting series. As, I, as I'm as i working, I'm going to be sharing with you guys, you know, uh, what what is happening. How do you start out your narration? You know, um, like I said, I think I'm going to start it out with a fight. <laughs> it might be a good way um, to start this out before I start introducing Tattoo and all the different characters um, and, and develop each of their personalities, how they talk. All kinds of things, but uh, so these are the photos we're basically talking about today, and it's off of this this meeting they're getting together here in the alley, and then they're gonna 
they're going to share their resources of uh, pass the bottle. And uh, yeah, well over 20,000 photographs that I'm having to to go through and get those down into, you know, usable, uh, usable work. <clears throat> Great stuff. Very interesting. Thank you. Hey, Ramblin, how you doing? Good to see you. Smash that thumbs up. Curtis, how you doing? Good to see you. Did you ever feel unsafe as a white guy in South? No, I've been there a few times daylight and always felt like I shouldn't stop. No, in the loop. No, I never felt. No, no. I mean, I, it's, I mean, a lot of people might be intimidated, I guess, in, in the loop there. Um, the sloop, as they call it, the South Loop. This is down by uh, um, a lot of, uh, well, let's see here. Where are we at? Okay, uh, this this door right here is, um, uh, what's the name of the camera shop there? Oh, God, I was in there a million times. Central Camera. It's been there for like 70 years. That's Central Camera, so that's uh, Wabash. Um, Wabash Avenue would be on the other side of these buildings, right? That's where the L goes down. <clears throat> and this is kind of probably about three blocks away from the Harold Washington Library, <clears throat> heading to the LaSalle Street Station. Yeah, a lot of people are, no, I never felt, no. No, not at all, man. I mean, not after hanging out in Inglewood and, and K-Town and all of those places. This is this is really tame. No, no, never. Um, I only had a few slight physical confrontations with people, um, but no. And, and, you know, I took the time to get to know all these people. I, I knew just about every homeless person, man, in this entire area. You know, I focus in on these guys, but there was a lot, you know, Phil, there was a lot of other homeless people um, that probably won't be part of the story because they weren't part of this clique of uh, probably about, oh, I don't know, seven or eight guys that kind of uh, hardcore homeless dudes. <clears throat> but uh, no, I never felt felt threatened at all. Not once. I, I even slept downtown with these guys. And I had a lot of respect downtown. Um Everybody knew who I was and uh, liked me. And no, I never had any anything like that. You say film was they developed in slides or pictures. You say film was they developed. You, you said something wrong there. Yeah, most of this is film. Um, and I developed myself in a stand development using rod and all. Um, it's a different technique of, uh, of developing. <laughs> Not sure what you're trying to say there. There was no slides. No, it's all 35 millimeter triax. Okay, I thought you were further downstate. <clears throat> oh, it doesn't matter. There isn't any place in downtown Chicago that I I would personally be afraid. This is the worst part of downtown, the South Loop. <clears throat> it's a rough. It's the roughest area of the downtown area. And a desire to back to Chicago for a visit. Yeah. Yeah, Gary, I'd go back, and then one of the first things I'd do is I'd go, for, I'd go try to find Teddy, man. I would go see if Teddy was still alive and how he was doing, because uh, I miss Teddy. As a matter of fact, man, if anybody's downtown and you see Teddy there by the Harold Washington Library, um, give him my phone number. It's it's on my websites, and uh, yeah, man, have him give me a call. Sometimes when he was in the hospital, he <laughs> he'd call me. He was in the hospital a lot. So yeah, I'm having to go through all of all of these photographs, and then you know how do you how do you tell the story? You know what are what are the main themes that you want to um, convey? Uh, do I need to break this up into multiple like a series, or can I do it all in one magazine? I think there's a limit of 270 pages per single magazine, and what I kind of decided to do is I'm just going to start telling this story. And if it looks like it's going to uh, ex exceed that, then I'll, then I'll break it up into a trilogy, trilogy. Um, you know, but I don't want to be restricted to that. I really just want to get in and tell the story and figure out how I'm going to, you know, some of the adventures these guys go, go on and, and kind of show that in a lot of ways, man, I mean, winters can be rough. There's, there's no doubt about that, but these guys have a pretty good life compared to the heroin addicts. You know what I mean? Um, they, they really do. And, and they've, 
contrary to what you hear, what's going to be different about this homeless story, it's not about how these guys are like innocent victims of an oppressive system. It's that's the, these guys have decided to live this way. And uh, Teddy's been on and off the streets since the seventies. Same thing with tattoo. Some of these guys are long on and off. Um, all of them struggle with, you know, or most of them anyway, with some, even if it's slight uh, m- mental issues, for sure. All substance abuse, for sure. Um, some of them more than others. Crazy Tony, uh, street preacher. We've done some photos of Tony. And uh, <laughs> he was a little crazier. If these guys are calling him Crazy Tony, he was pretty out there. And uh, so I got to develop all their different characters. You know, they're interesting. Like I said, Teddy was just um, a fast fascinating, charismatic, authentic person. That's why we really clicked, you know, because we're kind of both authentic people. And, um, I just really clicked with Teddy and he, he was a card, man. (laughs) He really was. And I I hope to convey that, um, when I'm, when I'm telling their story and I hope it can, I can do it justice, you know, a lot of funny things, you know, um, it was funny. I'll tell you the one story. So both of these guys, um, probably have mild schizophrenia. Okay. This is Hercules and Hercules is always coming up with these wild stories. Hey, another thing, like I was saying, if you're going to take on a project like this to have notebooks, I got a big stack of notebooks up there, right? Because you'll forget things. It's been, you know, six years since I've, since I've looked at this stuff. So I made sure that when he would tell stories and everything and, and how stutters talks, right? He doesn't pronounce certain letters correctly. I made sure to write that all out so I could get that down when I'm telling the narrative. But Teddy, Hercules, and me are walking down the street, and we're going uh, past the uh, Madinock building, one of the first skyscrapers in the world. And it's got some copper way up at the top. It's got some uh, copper soffit, right? And he's always got a wild story. Oh, yeah, when uh, my my grandma used to work for Teddy Roosevelt, and and uh, she she did all that work up there, and and then Teddy's looking at him like he's crazy and, and would say something. What did, what did he say? Everybody's got a right to their own mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody's got a right to their own imagination, he said. And uh, now one of the one of the things that I'm having the struggle with is do I and, and I want to be authentic. So do I do I speak and write the truth about these guys and how they because they use the N word all the time. <laughs> right? That's how they talk. Um, believe it or not, Teddy's kind of, um, them stupid N word. He would say them stupid country ass N word. He would say, always oh, voting for them. Damn Democrats. Them Democrats never do them fucking nothing. You know? So he, he's kind of like a conservative Republican, believe it or not. And he's feral. I mean, <clears throat> chronic shoplifter, um, urinating in the bank. I mean, just, just, he's really a feral dude, man. Um, so you wouldn't think he would talk like that, but he's very intelligent. Teddy is not even, and so is Hercules, man. Both of these guys are very intelligent stutters, <laughs> not so much, but, uh, uh, and stutters didn't stutter. He just, he talked real funny and I hope to be able to convey that. But, um, yeah, I really got to know these guys, and uh, we we were friends. And it's it's I'm glad to be. Oh, by the way, I uploaded on Friday the uh, um, the last issue of Against Doctors Orders up to Blurb. Um, so hopefully this week sometime I'll get that magazine back. It's a test copy, and we'll make whatever corrections, and uh, that's going to be for sale, um, and available to everybody. I'm sorry, I'm five years <laughs> five years behind schedule on that. I know a lot of people have been waiting for that because that, that was a trilogy. Um, again, lesson learned. I didn't have enough photos really to do. I should have ended that in the second magazine, and I didn't. And not really thinking or realizing, I really didn't have a lot of top-notch photos just of Shaggy to pull off a third issue. So that became a stumbling block. The other thing is, is that Shaggy was, is not my heroin project. Shaggy was actually someone I didn't photograph very much. Um, but I want to get off heroin for a, a period of time and move on to another project. My real heroin story is called Putting a Price on Heaven. And there's a lot of different people involved in it, kind of like the Alley Boys. Um, and I hope to get, you know, 
Punchy's house and all of that kind of stuff that that wasn't uh, conveyed in uh, uh, against doctor's orders. That was kind of singular to to Shaggy. And the main character in Putting a Price on Heaven is John Lee, who for two years I followed this guy around. So, you know, you learn as you go along, you know, keep make sure you keep notebooks. Make sure you got enough work to to if you're going to do a trilogy that you got three of them, you know. Um, and it's it's a two edged sword. At one point, like yesterday, when I was looking, you know, just cursory looking through the photos, I'm like, holy shit, I can't believe all these photos. And it's just it's it seems so overwhelming, you know. And it's like, OK, just calm down. <laughs> right. Rome wasn't built in a day. I've built lots of houses. And when you stand back and you look at a house that's been framed up and you think, oh, my God, look how intricate and complicated that is. Right. And it starts with starts with one brick at a time, one board at a time, one nail at a time. You know, I, I was like, how do you start the story? You know, and uh, while having breakfast with my wife this morning, I thought, wow. And looking at the series where Teddy's fighting, I thought, man, what a great way to, like, really get into the story with, with Teddy being in a fight. <laughs> I had a total different uh, opening in mind. Israel, uh, I was going to open up with, um, I was just having a cup of coffee in the alley. These guys have seen had seen me around, right? And Israel uh, came by and said, hey, what are you doing? And uh, I, I kind of thought I was a street photographer at the time. And he said, oh, you want to photograph some homeless dudes? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he took me down and introduced me to the for the first time. But that's kind of a boring uh, introduction, right? As compared to like, get your motherfucking hands out of my goddamn pocket. You know, that's a great first line. <laughs> and and Teddy scrapping, right? And uh, I think that's a much better way to to open this up and, and start it. And um, you know, I got I I actually got to know um, like Teddy's brother who passed away f before I had moved to prostate cancer and. Um, I've gotten to know some of the family members and everything. I really got involved with this. And that's what documentary photography, it's a long-term commitment. There, there isn't any money in this kind of stuff. I mean, um, you know, shit, I probably spent $300 a month just on train tickets, you know, going downtown as much as I did. And, um, you know, that's, there's not, there's not a lot of people doing this type of stuff for that length of time, a five-year project self-funded. Um, so it's, it's valuable work to me. And I really, I'm really glad I got to know these guys and have a very, very different story than the, than the, you know, standard narrative that, uh, what years? Oh, I can't remember, man. Um, 2016 was the last year. You have to tell it the way they spoke. That's part of the, who they are. Right, Gary, I agree with you, but it'd be interesting to see, you know, if blurb says, Hey, this is against community guidelines, you know, well, let me just tell you something. And it's an interesting little story. So Talk Talkers Park is really Pritzker's Park, okay? The Pritzker family. It's uh, uh, on the corner of State and Van Buren, right there by the Harold Washington Library. I call it Talkers Park because all the crazy people talk to themselves walking around the park. But anyway, there were some good-intentioned people that were working for the, um, whatever it was, Downtown Project Association. or, or anything. There's a real nice lady. Um, and... She had purchased all of this really nice lawn, uh, picnic tables and all kinds of stuff in Talkers Park. And um, just not really connected with what's going on, right? So Teddy says, them, N-word, I'm going to tear that shit up in a week. It's in their blood, right? And I want to be able to say that because that, that's what Teddy said, right? Well, it was less than a week, and they were using the chairs as weapons, and, <laughs> and they had to pull all that stuff out of there. And that's kind of like the disconnect from the from the college educated type social worker type, you know, whatever you want to say. There's a disconnect, you know. Um, I remember she hired uh, um, uh, someone to come by and do a puppet show, <laughs> right? When on Saturday, this, this old man used to bring out his, um, his speaker and he, uh, they do break dancing and all kinds of stuff. See, she was, just, she was out of, her heart was in the right place, but she wasn't understanding where the hell she was at, man. 
And I told her, I said, well, rather than hiring puppet shows, why don't you, why don't you like pay that guy with his uh, piano and his organ to, you know, come out here and uh, look, do what they want, want, you know, the cultural divide there and educational and economic divide. Uh, dang, a brain has to really be fire, uh, firing to put all that together after all those years. Like I said, man, it can be, it can be, like I said, avalanche was the video I did last night, but I'm, now I'm settling into it and it's like, okay, you know, you start at step one, get everything together onto one hard drive so you can at least, you know, start to make some, uh, you know, and then, it, and then it's like, all of this stuff is like, is like molding. It's like, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a creative process. It's an art. Right. Un unlike an individual photograph, which is uh, which is a, uh, just a instant uh, copy of what's the pre given art is a creative process, an assembly process, a trial and error process where you're taking many things, many abstractions, be they notes, colors, words, letters, photos, whatever the case may be, taking a whole bunch of those and then uh, reassembling them into that's what art is, is that. Any abstractions from reality, reassembling them into a new creation, okay? And uh, it's a it's a very interesting uh, process. And like I said, you just got to tell myself, you got to settle down. And yeah, over 20,000, maybe close to 30,000 photographs. And um, out of that, you have to, you know, sift through and um, get them down to where, okay, these are the ones that I can start to start to tell a story like, like in look, I didn't even realize I had these fight. I had totally forgotten that I had these fight photographs. It was just, I was looking through and I was like, oh man, I remember that. <laughs> and that's when I, it just clicked that, hey, this is a great way, a great opening to the story, you know, a great way to introduce Teddy and how, and how rough the streets can be, you know. And so here I have a little series of photographs of Teddy, Teddy fighting and, uh, and then go into the more the more playful stuff, you know, following him around in the alleys. He was having a a, a shoe sale. <laughs> he promised to get you the next. <laughs> he only had one shoe. Teddy was a character. He was always selling shit. You know, he he knew where the Teddy Teddy could open up a used store somewhere, man, because he knew where all the good dumpsters were at. Right? He was always finding shit and selling it, or or shoplifting it, or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good to see you. If I can't have it, destroy all. What? What do you mean? If I can't have it, destroy all. I don't know. I'm not even... I don't get what you're saying there, but... <laughs> so I want to share with you guys the process of doing this. And... Um, and it's a learning process for me all the time as well. And I'm really looking forward to doing this. This should be a really good, uh, either single magazine or a trilogy. It'll be, it'll be, but again, rather than me saying, I was thinking, okay, do a trilogy, do a single. And it's like, man, get that out of your mind. Just start writing the story, start putting the photographs together. You know, when you think you you've got it, you know, see where that, where that fits, you know, are you over the 270 pages or, you know, should I bust this up into three? And then if you end up busting it up into three, then you got three different endings, right? Cause you always want to leave them hanging. Right. Um, that's, you know, part of uh, creative writing. So this is multiple things. You're uh, combining creative writing with, with the, with the photography and the photographs about the future. Oh, the furniture. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting thing that Teddy said, and uh, as many interesting things as Teddy said, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to run with it, and we're going to talk how they talked and say the things that they said. And um, if that's in violation of somebody's community guidelines, then they're, they're really not um, a place for uh, real documentary work, <laughs> I guess. And I'll just go somewhere else. Um, I was even thinking, you know, next time I have some puppies, maybe investing and seeing what it cost, uh, you know, to have a real printer rather than print on demand, maybe fork out three or four G or whatever it is to get thousands because they won't do small printings. You might have to have 2,500 copies of something made. I might go that route as well. You know, 
Um, that way I can say, say tell the story that I don't want to be, I don't want to be dancing around and having to censor myself in this woke climate that we live in. Um, these are real people and I want to tell their story as, as real, um, as it is, but what a, what a great, what a great, uh, the, what did Teddy's brother say? Oh, you're making him out to be a movie star, <laughs> but he's a character. Old Teddy, he's a rough son of a bitch too, man. He's a tough old bird, buddy. He sure is, man. <laughs> Very intelligent. He was married at one point, had a regular job, you know. <clears throat> but there, there's a lot. And then, you know, what do you tell? It's it's a, it's a huge, a huge topic, you know. So not only do you got to window the photos down, then you got to window, uh, whittle the uh, creative writing down, you know. Um, but I, I don't want to be restricted. So I'm just, okay, whatever it is, I'm going to start writing it, start putting these photos together. And I'm not going to worry whether it's a trilogy or if it's one magazine or, you know, I'm not going to worry about any of that. Same thing with putting a price on heaven, my, my heroine. Um, whereas the shaggy that should have been in one magazine. Um, well, it might've been a little bit too much. This last one, I think is 73 pages. No, I should. All of those together could have probably fit into one 270-page uh, magazine. But live and learn, you know. Um, but now I know. Don't don't say you're going to do it this way or that way. Just the main thing is is writing it, getting the photos together, and then decide, you know, what it's going to uh, could, going to be. And again, I, I can't stress enough. Like I was saying, if you're going to take on this kind of work, um, oh, you ought to see the audio I got. I got lots and lots of audio. What I hope to also do as I'm doing this is use the audio I have and the photos that I'm going to be using and putting them into slideshow videos. Um, so if you're going to do this narrative documentary type work, like I said, the three things, yeah, you need a camera and keep that simple, man. You know, one camera, one lens, two lenses, that's it. Otherwise you got too much shit, you know, like I said, you, you, uh, Don McCollin shot the whole Vietnam War with a 28 and a 135 or a 105, can't remember. But two lenses, man, the whole Vietnam War, his whole career with just two lenses. We're gear happy today. I mean, there's so many channels about gear, gear, gear. You don't see too many channels that are like talking about their work on a daily basis or weekly basis. You don't see a lot of that. It's all about gear, gear, gear. And I can't do that because I... <laughs> That would be a real short conversation because I, I don't use, like I said, I use a lot of different camera bodies, but it was these lenses right here that all of this stuff that you've been looking at, except for the MMA, where I used a little bit of this 50. Um, but that's it, man, with, with that. Um, and I think, you know, when I'm printing these out, I'm looking, I'm like, man, I love film, but the scanning. Oh, you know, I'm thinking about getting a Nikon D750 for whatever I take on. And, uh, then I think about, well, I already got some really good film cameras and a bunch of film, you know, but I think about that scanning, but nowadays, uh, they have some pretty good little setups where you can use a digital camera. Um, so I don't know, man, maybe I should stick with film because it, it's really hard. It's really hard to, uh, get photos like that. It really is. There's to this day, there's still a difference between digital, digital photography and film photography. Uh, I can see it, you know. Oh, good old Teddy. But again, it's a lot more challenging with the film, um, especially in low light situations like that. It, uh, I remember when John Free came to do the workshop for my uh, meetup group. And uh, I, t I took him down on Lower Wacker Drive where I was photographing the heroin stuff to get some tips and John just was like, you can't shoot down here <laughs> and, and left. And I was like, well, that's, that's not much of an answer. I really do need to, uh, Chicago is wild, man has a different vibe. Oh, Chicago's got a good vibe. Um, one of the things we missed since we moved to New Mexico, like, you know, we ordered a motor for this Bronco in November to try to get something done in New Mexico is like, is like. This is a kick the can down the road, kind of mosey along. And Chicago ain't like that, man. It's a city that works, you know. 
Um, I love downtown Chicago. I really do. And, and, and a lot of the neighborhoods as well. Um, the two places that I would go is uh, New Orleans French Quarter, which I'm offering, by the way, a photography workshop the last Saturday in October of this year. Um, if you're interested, chuckgiant67 at gmail.com. You can get in touch with me and let me know if you're interested in that. It'll be on a Saturday. Um, also, head over to chuckgiants.com, my website. There's a lot of essays. There's a lot of uh, blog posts, all kinds of stuff there. It's a pretty large website. I've had it about uh, 10 years or so. Um, but sign up for the email subscription over there. It's for free, and I don't keep any of your information. That dude is feral. Oh, yeah, he's feral. Well, here, you know, some people saying, oh, man, we're going to try to get Teddy a, a house. You don't want to get Teddy a house. <laughs> and Teddy don't want no house. That's the whole thing, man. People, uh, well, that's what's cool. You can see that watermark on there. See that? <laughs> From film photography. Which is interesting. See, I didn't see that on the computer. And now that that's why everything that I'm going to potentially put into the magazines, I need to print out like that because now I can see that. And that would have showed up in the magazine as well. No big deal. I can go in and Lightroom now and correct that. But, um, you know, it's hard to get that. It's hard to get that. Uh, like, you're not looking at this like I am because it's on, it's on the thing. But, man, the detail in his face is just amazing. That's where Teddy got stabbed once in the face. I'll tell you about that story when we, <laughs> when we write about things. Did you have the little Fujifilm camera that was on? Oh, dude. Who was I watching? Zach Arias, right? Who I shouldn't have been listening to because the guy's not a documentary photographer. I was thinking about going digital and um, these guys were all talking about the Fuji X100, right? Man, I used that camera one day. I think I paid $1,200 for that piece of shit and I was ready to kick it down the road. So no, I didn't, I didn't use that, man. <laughs> Like I said on the comment of his thing, I about kicked that damn thing down the road. <laughs> Piece of junk. I remember the old way, uploading pictures with a scanner took forever. Oh, dude, the scanning. Ah, to me, that's what makes me not want to shoot film, right? Because you have to do it yourself. There's no way you can shoot 20,000, 30,000 photos and send that off to a lab today. Uh, that would be... $50,000 worth of developing. <laughs> and I don't have that kind of scratch. So you have to do, you have to do it yourself. And to me the most laborious thing was the was the scanning. Uh man, could you shoot a project on a fixed lens rangefinder? You could if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to use a rangefinder. <clears throat> this the the the, the uh advancement was the uh uh reflex camera i'm not a rangefinder fan but yeah you could shoot on whatever you want to shoot on <laughs> i just shoot on uh uh these is what i use but yeah you could shoot whatever you want bust out the fed all right <laughs> actually gary there are some of these photos, I'm not joking with you, that were shot with this right here. <laughs> this has got film in it right now. It's been in there a long time. I love this camera. I love this camera, man. This is a copy of the, um, uh, what is this now? Is this the Fed 2? This is the Fed 1, which is a copy of the Leica 2. This is what Henry Carter Abrisson used, right? The 50 millimeter lens. I love this camera, man. I love it. Kind of tricky to load the film in, but it's so tiny. <laughs> it's just great. But actually, I actually use, I, ha I have used this. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you, remember what photos were shot with this camera, but um, I used, I used the Fed a little bit. Not, not extensively, maybe one or two times I took it out and shot a couple rolls, but I've used it. You can tell he's a character from the photos. He seems animated. Oh, he is, dude. He's a character, man. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. I'm glad I wrote that down all the stories. Um, he had cataracts real bad, right? And he got hit by a bus. So he's walking around with the cast 
And I'm like, dude, what happened? He's like, well, I was down at Navy Pier, had my foot in the water, and then fucking sharks came in the, about to my leg. You know, always, always a story with Teddy, you know. Um, and then he cuts off the, ta- the cast and won't wear it. And, oh, man. <laughs> Just a real character, man. He's, he's definitely animated. And I got some, you know, uh, I got, I got some, what's great about these photos is they're, they're not like portraits of people. This is all like candid stuff, you know, just as, as things are, are happening. Um, they're not, and I I wouldn't, I don't stage things or say, Hey, could you move over here or anything like that? I kind of just disappear and, and do what I got to do, you know? And, uh, that's, that's a, and then eventually what happens is, is they get used to me shooting photos and they forget I'm there as well. And that's, I, I think once you get to that point where you've been able to disappear and they're like, like the heroin addicts several times were like, Oh shit, I forgot. You're not a junkie. <laughs> you know, I, I became so part of what they were doing that it was, they don't think nothing of it. And that's when all pretenses are down. That's when you've gotten past all of the personas and that's when the real magic begins. And that, that takes a lot of time. You know, Daryl, Chuck, thanks for sharing. Oh, no problem, man. This is my work, you know. Any plans to shoot more at the border towns? Um, I could go with the border issue. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I actually had permission to camp out on a couple of different ranches, one in Arizona, one in New Mexico. I don't know if I want to do that story. It was leading me into the drug cartel and I don't want to fuck with them, man. Um, I don't know what I'll do for right now. The only thing that, uh, if I, if I have anything in the immediate plans, it's ghost towns. I want to do some more ghost towns videos. Um, I, I love videography. That's something I really got into when I got back into motorcycling kind of led me into videography and um, photography for the last five years or so really kind of have ta- has taken a back seat to my videography um, and, and probably will uh, for, the, for the most part because I love videography, the night laps uh, with the galaxies and just so many, so many cool things. Um, another thing that I was thinking about doing is little adventures to all the state campgrounds and um, uh, doing something there. I don't really have any, any, any plans right now. My plans are is the sit down and get these. Like I said, I got the alley boys. I have my real heroin project. I have new Orleans. I have political protests. Um, I have black lives matter. I got a lot of different subjects with a lot of different photographs that need to be put into published magazines and, and out in the world and off of these hard drives. So for right now, you know, uh, my plans are to get, get published what I've already produced. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where I'm at at this point. And if I do anything, it's going to be videography more so than photography. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's amazing how much film is now too. It's amazing. It's, it's the price of a roll of film has almost tripled since the last time I shot the for sure. Anybody doing projects right now? Oh, that's what I was getting at. Sorry, got off track. Two things that I highly recommend if you're going to do narrative long-term documentary work. Notebooks, man. You got to have notebooks. You got to have an audio recorder. And I really recommend, this is, I've had, I've had more current Zoom recorders. I don't like them. This Zoom 2 is a badass little recorder. One of the things I like about it is it starts up real quick. I've had the Zoom 4, I've had other Zooms, and they take so long, um, and they get so complicated. For doing documentary work, this is more than adequate, man. This is a really fine recorder. Um, I have it set it on a WAV file. It, uh, I don't can't remember what it is, but it, it's the, it's like it's like raw photos, and and then I bring it down to uh, uh, down to size in in, in a. a audacity is the program i use so for this type of work you need of course your camera keep that camera gear really simple you need notebooks and pens and you need an audio recorder Uh, like i said alongside with doing this alley boy uh, gravis magazine issues i'll also be doing 
still photographs with the, with the audio because I have so much audio that I can also also utilize. So, <clears throat> yeah, you don't want to screw with the cartels, man. I mean, fucking with the banditos and stuff like that. You know, that's one thing. The cartels, them motherfuckers, man. <laughs> They kill judges and all. They're serious motherfuckers, man. So it looks like that uh, brick of film is still on the shelf. Yeah, it probably will be. Dude, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, like, like I just said, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not actively shooting a project. If I, if I do anything, I photograph my dogs, you know, and uh, I have, I have plenty of photos. Like I said, there's, there's between 20 and 30,000 alley boy photos <laughs> that I need to be going through. And, uh, like I said, I have all this other mountains of work that, uh, uh, I've shot over the years that, uh, I don't, I don't really need to take another photograph <laughs> at this point in time. I'm pretty well good. Um, so I don't have any, I don't have any immediate plans. You know, uh, uh I want to get back into the motorcycle adventures. If you guys don't know, I have back road biker adventures is another YouTube channel that I have. And uh, so you're more likely going to see stuff like that before you see any new documentary work other than, you know, you're looking at stuff I've never published. So, you know, this is new. Uh, yeah, I shot it six, seven, eight, nine years ago, uh, but it's new material and it's coming out in, in a new publication. So, you know, it's it's as fresh as a morning daisy, you know. Yeah, that brick will be sitting there a while, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> It can sit there a long time because I burned through a lot of bricks, man. What film speed do you prefer? Um, I use, most of this is uh, pushed at sixteen hundred. It's tri X four hundred rated at four hundred, but I usually push to sixteen. No, I haven't gotten a new bike yet, but I'm I'm more than likely going to, and I'm working on Bertha at the same time. I'm gonna get her up and running, and uh, I'm probably gonna get a Goldwing. A nice tour. Harold, thank you. There's my website, chuckjines.com. Any more questions about these photos or these projects that are going on? Hey, please make sure that you leave comments on the video itself, not the chat, but the videos. Uh, that, that really helps the algorithms, I guess. Was your train rides into town published or was it video? I don't remember. No, I have a little book that actually I need to go back um, – you know, the blurb is so expensive. <laughs> it really is. I mean, it's really almost impossible to publish things there with the idea of resale in mind. Um, but I published a little book. It should be right here, but it's not. Called Metro Rail. Uh, because I have... Anyway, I need to redo that. Because in looking through my photos, I got so many train photos. And I need to publish it into the magazine because the magazines are about the most affordable um, thing that you can get at Blurb. Way, way more affordable than the, than any of their books. So I'm going to do Metro Rail over again at some point because there's a lot more photos that I can have included in that. And um, uh, But I'll, I'll be putting it into a magazine. You can get these two uh, issues over on my website, chuckgiants.com, and you'll find a... Uh, a little thing to my blurb bookstore there. There's also a uh, tab up top that says publications that have links to where you can go and purchase these first two issues. Like I said, on Friday, I uploaded the uh, uh, last issue of this uh, edition of this against doctor's orders for a test copy that I should get this week. Um, so sometime real soon for you folks that have been waiting um, within the next couple of weeks, it's going to be available and we'll, we'll put a close on against doctor's orders. And uh, again, you, you'll want to get the first two issues before you get that third one or else you won't know what's really going on. But um, again, this was not my actual heroin project. This was like a footnote almost, but it, it turned into a trilogy and it worked out well. And I think you'll, I think you'll, uh, I think enjoys a strange word to use, but I think you'll like it. Hope to cross paths someday out here in Arizona. Yeah, I actually got a little piece of property down there by uh, Wilcott <laughs> that I need to go look at and bought it sight unseen. But yeah, Gary, we need to meet sometime, man. We've been uh, online friends for a long time. We sure have. 
All right. Is there any more questions about that? Um, the next uh, photo talk that we're going to do is going to be about Eads Bridge in St. Louis, just to change the topic a little bit. Uh, probably Tuesday we'll do that one. But um, be sure to leave a comment below. Uh, let me know, you know, what kind of things you want to hear about um, as far as photography goes. I know, Not the politics stuff, but, um, you know, whatever questions you have that could give me ideas for, for making videos where I can answer your questions. I'm not much of a gearhead, like I said. So, you know, asking me about the latest and the greatest in the gear isn't going to go real far with me because I, I use old shit. And uh, even if I get a Nikon D750, I'll be using these old manual focus lenses. Um, but, uh, yeah, be sure to leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it if you want to, but uh, all of that helps the algorithm and helps the channel. I, I like Arizona. I haven't been there in a while. Yep. Arizona is a cool place, man. No doubt about it. All right. You all have a, uh, today is Sunday. You go have a good week ahead of you and, uh, look for more of these as I'm, as I'm moving along in this next narrative publication project. All right, man, everybody be safe. Thank you.